And now, Freelance Heroism presents Bard Company. Hey everybody, and welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before I even get started, we just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm-hmm. Rachel, would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Crispy, Nate, Breakmeister, and Rebecca. Thank you so much, everyone. You help us make a better show for everyone, and we couldn't do it without you. So, thank you. Thank you. Rachel. Dees. <laughs> You've been watching Doctor Who. Uh-huh. All on your own, without anybody. <laughs> just you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I, I feel like I might have twisted your arm a little bit into watching Doctor Who. Both times that we watched it. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've just never um, really watched much Doctor Who on my own. Right. Um, I watched, I think, like, the first new season with, like, the ninth Doctor. Yeah. But that was a long time ago. I remember enjoying it, and then I just sort of fell off. Um, but we are... Like just fell off because you didn't like the new doc. You didn't like David Tennant? No. <laughs> Hear that, internet? She no, She hates not. David Tennant. <laughs> she hates him. That's not what I'm saying. She said Broadchurch was a piece of shit. No, Broad- Broadchurch was really good. You can send your emails to... <laughs> I'm, just... <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, I I think um, Doctor Who is one of those shows that is jarring at first, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, you have to look past the fact that it is kind of made from plastic. Some of the stuff is made from plastic, right? Yes. Like, the aliens look weird sometimes. and mm-hmm. But that's not where the show, that's not where the value of the show is. It Right. The value of the show is that it has heart, like, a lot of it. Yeah. And I think that even episodes where you were like at the beginning you're like this is weird. <laughs> i'm like yeah it's weird give it time mm-hmm. it'll get there yeah right and it always does um and then at the end you're just like oh my god this is sad i'm like yeah right? <laughs> it is it is a little sad right yeah but heartwarming in other moments and there's redemption and it's just mm-hmm. i don't know it's it's fantastic i love it more than almost anything <laughs> Uh, it's up there with with my Star Trek. It's like Star Trek, Doctor Who, mm-hmm. SG One, mm-hmm. that kind of. It it definitely feels like whoever is sort of crafting the story and the lore and the themes, like they really care about these things. Like it feels like sort of every detail, even like dialogue between characters, is just really considered when they. Or, or crafting a story or writing a script. Right. Oh, for sure. I I think also that we were talking about it the other day, um, where I you would ask the question, but I knew I couldn't answer it without <laughs> I couldn't answer it without spoiling something, mm-hmm. and so I didn't want to spoil it because it's important that you have the experience yourself, right? Not just be told about it. So right. like I was like how can I respond? And I was like, oh. And so I just responded, a good man goes to war. Uh And you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. (laughs) But if if people that are listening to this have watched uh, uh, Doctor Who before, they know what that means. Mm -hmm. And so I started just saying stuff like that a lot, like different references. (laughs) As the references would come up, I would make it like a the the Doctor Who uh, fucking comment. Like uh-huh. the, the tagline to something important, right? Like, oh, the bad wolf, right? And you're like, what? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. we were talking about it. It almost comes out like Doctor Who Thieves Can't. <laughs> that's the right? thing you it's like Doctor Who Thieves Can't. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it's like. If two people are in a room with a third person, two of them have seen Doctor Who, they can have an entire conversation about Doctor Who without the third <laughs> person ever understanding anything. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> Right? Yeah. We, we had just finished watching the episode with the Dream Lord, aka yes. the Valiar, uh-huh. aka the internal doctor. Right? <laughs> right? And at one point, I was like, the Valiar. And you're like, the what? 
I was like, this is this is how I'm going to have to behave for a little right. while. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I am sure that that can be frustrating because I feel like there's several shows that we've watched because I am sorely behind on a lot of TV shows and movies. That's um, true. And so it feels like there are... Sometimes I'll make a joke. She doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. And I'm like, oh, my God, have you seen the Truman Show? And she's like, I've never seen the Truman Show. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're watching the Truman Show. But it feels like there, there's uh, times, especially in shows where if you've, you've watched the show before and we're watching it, and then I'll ask a question and you're like, I can't answer that. <laughs> like that's really observant of you. I can't answer. It. <laughs> yeah, I well, I mean, I mean that's that's the point though. Is that like yeah. the fir- on the first time watching it, I could explain everything, mm-hmm. but I started thinking about like that would not only take away from the moment that you're in of genuine curiosity about a thing, which is what I valued about it when I watched it, right? But also that you could unintentionally add context to things that might be designed to be a misdirection. Yeah. So like in that episode, Amy's choice, mm-hmm. you, your idea <laughs> of what the choice is, is because of the episode prior is one thing, right? Mm-hmm. You think right away it's between doctor and fucking Rory. Right. Right. But then throughout the episode, you realize that she has to choose which of the dream things is the real one. But yeah. then it comes back around to the initial thing. So, like, yeah. <laughs> where do I, where do I tell you, like, mm-hmm. what point from of that narrative do I tell you what the reference to that is? I don't. I right. can't. So, and there's a bunch of those. And by the way, uh, t- in two episodes mm-hmm. on the not the next one, but the one after that, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be able to say fucking anything to you. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just going to have to say a good man goes to war. Uh-huh. The Pandora come opens. Uh-huh. Silence will fall. Okay. And eventually we'll talk about Trenzalore. All right. And the real name. <laughs> and the impossible girl. Okay. And that'll be a thing. <laughs> okay. And I just have to be vague about it. All right. Well. Mm. Uh... You have to face the raven someday, Rachel. I look forward to these things. Although I will say, um, going back to Amy, uh, I know that these are sort of early Amy episodes. <laughs> yes, I know it's she rough. Kinda, I know she's rough. She, she kind of sucks. Yeah, she's she does. Kind of not a not a great person sometimes. I'm sure that part of it is just like early episodes of introducing a character. Why? Well, I think part this of is by is, design. Yeah, I'm sure part of it is like for her to have character growth later. But right now, like, she'll say something to, like, kind of blame, like, Roy or the doctor about something. And I'm like, but you did that. Yeah. <laughs> that was but, your fault. I don't, but see, here's the thing. is like, I, sometimes I think that shows will do a thing where they want character development. So what they'll do is they'll make a character genuinely a piece of shit at the beginning just so they can work towards them being average as a positive. Uh-huh. In this instance, I think a lot of the behaviors that she... Uh, displays mm-hmm. are very common yeah. <laughs> behaviors yeah. from people. And because of us being removed from the situation and not mm-hmm. being directly tied to it, it's very obvious for us. And so we should all think about that, like in our lives. Now, I'm not targeting anybody with this. So I feel mm-hmm. like someone <laughs> might do it that I am. But if you are, maybe uh-huh. you should. So, like, <laughs> if you think, think this is about you, Maybe, Maybe it, it is. is. <laughs> Maybe it is. There it is. Yeah, just, I mean, there should be, when you're not in directly involved in a situation, mm-hmm. it's easy to appraise it fairly, right? Yeah. When you're in the situation, all of a sudden, there's all kinds of things that can cause, uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, what is it? Like? Uh, a perception filter <laughs> of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I like how you're into the psychic paper. I really dig that. <laughs> I think the psychic paper is very cool. I know. Um, it is very cool. <laughs> and I want I want to like learn more about it. Is it oh, like you... Is it Gallifreyan technology? It is, but wait, I mean they have other people have it too, but it's Gallifreyan yeah. in, in nature. Okay. But like 
the when he shows it to some people mm -hmm. i don't want to again i don't want to spoil but everyone's reaction to it is different because it's based on their own mentality uh -huh. right their own internal visualization of themselves and of the situation so yeah. like when he showed it to rory <laughs> Rory was like, I'm your eunuch. And I'm like, that's how he feels about this particular moment. So it's like a character building thing every time yeah. he uses it. And they, he shows it to a centauran mm -hmm. later. And it's one of my favorite interactions ever. It's so good. Okay. It's so good. But I won't spoil. Because you don't even know who the centaurans are. I don't. Okay. They're a bunch of centaurs? They're potatoes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I genuinely somebody, I can't tell if you're making that up or if that's if, like an actual. That's perfect. If <laughs> if somebody if somebody out there watches Doctor Who and they know who the Centaurans are and, and I call them a potato, you, they will be fucking dying right now. I don't know. It's so funny. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, uh, do we want to go to this week's episode? Sure. What's the episode title? So this is Bard Company. Episode 33, Field Tripper. Man, I really, I was genuinely worried that you guys would finish this and then finish this other thing that I had prepared and then, like, I wouldn't have enough. What after that. would have ever led you to believe that was a potential? I don't know. <laughs> Boy. I you was, really overthought this one. I did. I really did. You spent two hours fighting some zombies. In all fairness, uh, I didn't really have a whole lot to do on my sheet. There was nothing. So I'm I'm to a point now where it's functional. It's still not perfect. Okay. Um, it's like the little details like uh, modifiers here and there and then like organization. And I don't have any idea how much money I have or... Uh, my supplies that were in my bag um but on the positive side i do have five character sheets for the raven so <laughs> so Good. if anything bad happened well actually i just saved this one so i might have six character sheets of renazbeer now <laughs> i don't know how this works exactly so so we'll see okay Anyway, I can't wait for this new chair. Holy! As, as soon as you think about sitting in a new chair, mm -hmm. the chair that you're sitting in currently sucks. Just imagine yeah. that there's a new chair on the way, and your oh. butt will start to hurt <laughs> in whatever you're sitting in. Do you remember when, uh, when for like months I had that leg sciatica kind of oh, back yeah. Yeah. problem? Mm. I hadn't felt that in a long time right mm -hmm. because the new tablet makes it easier to kind of change positions in this seat yeah as opposed to sitting all night in a weird one mm -hmm. um but i still switch back and forth so like uh i hadn't really felt that pain and then the other day i was using the small tablet to do a comic the last comic i did mm -hmm. uh and i was up all night drawing on that thing and the next morning when i went to get up my back was fucked i could feel oh, my no. back was all fucked up right uh it went away mm -hmm. it wasn't like permanent damage but i can imagine that if i had to go back to doing that for i don't know two months i'd be right back in that yeah. so this i really want this chair yeah <laughs> i want it bad ote hello hey spare the dying is a necromancy or yeah it's a necromancy spell that'll automatically put someone back to zero right Yes, it'll stabilize them. My new move is to take that and just use it with my finger in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> like, we uh. use the same system. <laughs> <laughs> is that even, do you have to be adjacent to, oh, yeah. You have to touch them. Range touch, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, range <laughs> touch. Doesn't even say hand. I can do it however I want. Just like administering a potion. I'm going to administer my fucking elbow. You have to grab the kidneys and squeeze them back to life. Uh, uh, all right. The butthole juice, by the way, guys. 
I'm just there's something genuinely funny about it to me. It's just it's just a it's a completely unique thing that no other DD group does but us. <laughs> and uh and I'm here for that. If I can serve a uh, fictional character's butthole as prop for humor, then by all means. Okay. Plus Renesmere is not really a prude when it comes to stuff like that. Uh he's yeah, pretty, I, I don't he's think prudish. Open. <laughs> it's pretty open to pretty much everything. Yeah, I don't think prudish is in our vocabulary anywhere. Well, he grew up in a whorehouse, so <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he was wrong. sold. He was sold in the Underdark when he was going to be executed. Some person told him they would buy him because uh, he was playing an instrument, and they're like, he can play on the caravan. And then the caravan lost a poker game to someone, and then they traded me to pay off the debt. And the person ended up trading me for a night at this brothel. And then he was just like, okay, so you live here now. And then the, the ladies there didn't want to get rid of me because they thought I had switched houses too much. So I was raised by prostitutes. That's a weird alternative plot to how I met your mother. <laughs> what? <laughs> how I met all your mothers. Your mothers burn. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag burn. <laughs> exactly oh my god i've never grouped your mama before that's fantastic <laughs> oh my god i could get two i had friends that were uh, twins i could always do two i never got three this is like a momentous occasion okay so um the forge area that you guys are in there's a number of different exits uh you guys came in from the east um however there's um a hallway to the south and then further to the west uh, there's a set of stairs that go south but then also uh, straight west there is a closed door um, and then to the north um, if you go in like the the water channel that's the dry water channel um, it goes north and then turns west um we should heal <laughs> We should sit and rest. Yeah, we can take it. So um, I've got a thing I can do. Uh, we can, I can do Song of Rest. If you or any friendly creatures who can hear you uh, or um, regain hit points at the end of a short rest by spending one or more hit dice, each of those creatures regains an extra 1d6. Okay. So is that useful? Yeah. I mean, anything okay. that adds points is useful. And apparently I can, uh, that's not, that's just a thing I can do all the time. Because there's no, it, it's not like once per whatever. It's uh, anytime we take a short rest, you guys get an extra D6. Right on. Okay. I'm at full health, so I don't need to do anything, but the others might benefit from that. Yeah, I definitely do. So at the, short the end is... of this hour... Um, you guys will have to repulverize your flame skull because <laughs> it started to like. Necromancer doesn't really get anything necromancery until pretty high level, hmm. which is pretty weird. Do you want to change your class again? No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to change it. I'm just making the point that in in yeah. every other version of necromancer from every other game, <laughs> like Pathfinder and at Pathfinder, you get it at level three, uh, the ability to have a minion. Uh, in D and D prior editions, there were classes they'd let you get around four, like uh, or five, when you start to be able to cast third level spells. But the effect of actually gaining that on the necromancer thing, um, because it's a like a subclass, the next ability you get one at second when you get the arcane tradition, then you get another one at sixth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so bard at one. And then six levels deep into wizard is level seven. Yeah. Even even in the best case scenario, it's still level six. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, most classes get to do a thing their class is known for relatively early. Mm -hmm. Right? This one sort of is like a, a, a wizard that has bonus modifiers for things that are necrotic. Also, they nerfed this shit out of Ray of Enfeeblement. What in the fuck is this? Ray of Enfeeblement now reads, uh, hold on, because I was pl planning for 
second level spells for the regular wizard necromancer, right? A black beam of enervating energy springs from your finger towards a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, the target deals only half damage with weapon attacks that use strength until the spell ends. At the end of each of its turn, it can make a constitution save. What? On a success, the spell ends. That's, That's the lame. whole spell. Hold on, let me find the Ray of Enfeeblement for 3-5. And that's a second level spell? Yep. It's good for bosses. Takes a penalty to strength of 1d6 plus 1 to caster levels in 3-5. They lose 1d6 plus 1 uh, per every two caster levels. That's how broken it was in 3-5. Wow. Now, maybe that's too broken. Mm -hmm. Fair. That's fair. But Jesus Christ, man. The other one sucks. Yeah, just suck. Half damage. What? <laughs> Ever make a person incapable of using their own feats? <laughs> like, make their plate mail hold them to the ground? It's so <laughs> stupid. Oh. As soon as I saw I was available to have it, I was like, that. For sure, that. <laughs> uh, and then I read it. And I was like, well, that's coming off. <laughs> uh yeah let's see what let's uh, screw it let's go one more let's go one more room All i know right. we've got like 17 different directions we can go in yeah. how many hit points do we heal for that rest we did a full rest or we do a it was a short rest so you should have um you got four you got uh four hit dice yeah so well no you got however many hit dice plus a d6 All right. right so it's two eights two tens and a six. Okie doke. So you guys have a couple of different directions to go. Uh, you can follow the channel, which goes north and then west. Um, there's a couple of hallways that go south. Um, it's likely that those go to the same room. Okay. Um, and then if you go straight uh, west, there is a shut door. Oh, shut doors are always the doors. They're the ones. Is it a double door? Is it a brass double door with a pattern on it? Nice. I want to go knock on the door. Single Can you describe the door to us? <laughs> Paint us a word picture, DM. What I want is to see how many adjectives they use to describe the door. If it's more than two, then there's something <laughs> important behind it. The door is six feet tall and four feet wide. Um, it is made of stone fitted with iron handles and hinges. Okay, we go to that door. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, I would like to make an arcana check to see if it is somehow magically trapped or anything, because after what we just walked through, that kind of seemed trappish as well. Uh, that would be a 15. You do not detect any sort of magic on the door. All right. Well, I'm going to be in the back a good ways and staggered to the left slightly. <laughs> I'll, uh... That's called the, that's called the rogue failure positioning. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it for a lot. I'll check to see if the door's locked. Okay. Um. So the door is not locked, but it's um. You can tell that it's barricaded, like the real bears. <laughs> uh, it's it's been barricaded from the from the inside. From the inside. Yes. So the door opens in. Yes. Okay. Um, I push on it. Give it all. Give it. A, give me a strength check. All righty. Channeling cousin Adri. Beer check. Beer strength. Wait, whoops. Wrong Adri. <laughs> Nine. Pump. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ow. Channeling Mel. Channeling Mel. Yeah. <laughs> you mean to put your shoulder into it, but you stumble and you go head first. Mm -hmm. Ow. Oh, it, does, it does not move. Yeah. Oh no. And the thing my skull move though. Shit. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, oh, no, wait, wait. I'm gonna use my leaping boots to leap at it and then drop kick the door in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't want okay. to. Okay. Well, this seems like a dead end for now. Um, so you said we've got doors that go to the south, but that would lead. Uh, those are those are open 
hallways. Hallways. Um, the one closest to the door you guys are at, there's a set of stairs that go down. Um, the other way to the south was closer to the entrance where you guys originally came into this cavern. Okay. Um, that one didn't have stairs, but uh, it seems like the, the entrances are fairly close to each other, so it's either two rooms that are adjacent to each other or one big room. Okay. If we go, and if we go east, we go back where we came from. Yes. If we go west, that's the door that was locked, and then we can go through the waterway to the north that was feeding the um, feeding the forge. Yes, that goes north and then <clears throat> west. Hmm. I don't think we should go down the stairs just yet. There seems to be more on this level to experience first before heading down. So I don't know. What do you say? Waterway to the north? Take the coin, flip it. Okay. And we'll do the opposite of whatever it says. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. Uh, uh, so even is north and odd is stairway to the south. Uh, we're going to the north. Okay. All righty. So you guys kind of hop into the, the channel. Um, it's oh. only like five feet down, um, and it is it is dry. There's no water in it. Mm. Uh, um, does it look like anything's moved through here recently, or does it look like it's been no. dormant for quite a while? So it's there's been, like, Yeah, it's been empty for a while. So, but I mean, it's like dusty, dirty, debris, yeah. stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. so not obnoxiously clean is what I'm hinting at here. Right. Gotcha. Understood. Channel, go ahead. Let's go. Okay. So it goes about 50 feet north before it turns uh, to the west. Okay. And then it goes about 30 feet. And what you guys can see, because you are all elves with dark vision, um, there is a... Uh, it opens up into a cavern. There is a wide rift that fills the eastern half of the cavern. You guys are sort of like on the, the edge of it. Um, a stream pours out of the west wall um, and tumbles down into the rift, which is further down from you guys, um, and flows out again to the north. Several ropes are secured to the iron stakes along the western edge of the rift, leading down to the chasm floor. Um, the chasm floor is about 20 feet down from where you guys are. Uh, go ahead and give me perception checks. Oh, boy. Wow, I rolled a 19, so that's a 20. Oh. My rolls have been pretty good tonight. Um, from looking at this, would does Wait, it make sense? Okay. Yeah, Sorry. does it? That's okay. Does it make sense like the water originally flowed down this channel? Um, it, it could have been that it was maybe deeper at like a, a previous <clears throat> time and it sort of dried up a bit, um, but there must be some sort of water source kind of to the southwest and that's where it's coming from. Okay. Um, but with your, with your 20, you can see that um, in the, the rift 20 feet down from you guys, there are um, a couple of bugbears that seem to be kind of like poking around the, the jumble of rocks down at the bottom of the rift. Um, whereas across the rift, uh, which is about 25 feet across before it gets back up to about the same uh, floor level as you guys, there is another bugbear who is speaking uh, with a male drow. Spider! <laughs> it's the spider! Now, the ropes that go down, mm -hmm. we would assume those were the bugbears' as ropes, right? Yeah, those are on the uh, the western side, so opposite of the side that you guys are on. I want so probably they go up and down on those those ropes. I want to get low and crawl over there uh, and cut the ropes. You would have to cross the rift to get to the ropes. Oh, they're on the other side. Oh, I can jump side. over there and do it. You could. There's also a bugbear and a drow on that side. How far away from the edge of the... Uh, they're probably about 10, 15 feet away from the, the edge of it. It looks like the, the drow is sort of like giving orders to the, the bugbear. Alright, give me one second. Anyone got like a spell? Um, I have plenty of spells. Why do you ask? Got a spell. I'm just going to cantrip. I'm yeah. going to use mage hand as a cantrip. Go over there and lift each rope quietly. Oh. I can probably get all three of them because ropes aren't too heavy. So I'll just take 
rocky outcrop, grab all three ropes, and then lift our <laughs> lift them up onto the top of the thing so the people in the trench can't get out. Don't you have Palmola still? No. Oh. No, I was uh, unfortunately kicked by uh, a mule. I lost <laughs> the ability. Gotcha. Pamela ran away with the uh, the Wizard of Thay hand. That oh, okay. Yeah. Thing from the Adams family. Yeah. She will be fist. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. All right. Uh, give me a give me a stealth check, Renazir. What for using my invisible hand? Okay. I just, I just want to make sure you're not like, like, waving it around like one of those noodles. It's invisible, guys. Rachel. <laughs> but the rope is not invisible. Oh, true. Okay. Uh, um, four seventeen. Okay, that's good enough. So you're able to to like slowly pull the ropes up, so the uh, bugbears are presumably trapped. Presumably, down the rift. Like, presumably. Phrase. It is. And do we have any way to like? grease down there <laughs> just burn them <laughs> <laughs> um across the rift you guys can see there are a couple different uh exits that go to the west both of them are stairs that go up hmm. there's okay. one on the uh, <clears throat> southwest side and then one on the northwest side hmm okay i want to use my my staff uh-huh to give myself a uh, mage armor. Okay. Yep. All right. So that'll put my AC at plus three. Okay. And then what are you guys doing? I have a plan for something to do that they want to notify me about, or am I just going to renounce me of this situation? Well, you're, you, you went over and, and, and you've taken the ropes, right? I just lifted them out. I'm still on site with you. Okay. I just made change. Right, but I mean, where are the ropes now? They're just in your mage hand? No, I, they were probably pinned down, and they don't have the strength to rip them out, so they're just up on top. There's no way for them to climb up. I sent you guys a map of like where, of what yep. the area looks like, just to help give you an idea. Um, so you guys are in that uh, southeastern hallway, um, and there's gotcha. a couple bugbears in the chasm, and then... Uh, across the way, kind of closer to the southern set of stairs uh, on the western side is the bugbear and the drow. Gotcha. Um, well, so if you've, if you've moved the ropes, the bugbears that are down in the chasm really don't have a, an easy way to get up. Right. right. So we just have to be aware that if we do get to the other side, we should probably more permanently disable the ropes so that they don't use a mage hand to push them back down. Right, but that still implies that we're going to have to climb down and climb back up somehow. No, we can jump across. Um, you might be able to. I don't know that I will. I have a floating disc. I can send you over. <laughs> you want me to ride your disc? I want you to ride my disc, baby. <laughs> let me give it. Let me give it the old Aunt Jemima treatment. Scoop uh, up under you like a spatula, you know. Slide you um, across. What you think? Well, you know, if you want, if we want to play ultimate frisbee with, you know, the leather saddlebag, sure, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Whoever is going to be the solo target. <laughs> whoever what? Of whoever wants to attack them. Uh, well, didn't you? Well, nobody's got grease. Uh, I could try and put them to sleep. That's uh, a thing I could do. The bugbears. The bugbears in the cavern, in the Fuck chasm. They're, already, they're useless. They can't. Well, I mean, they're not useless. They can climb up. Maybe. I still think setting them on fire is an option. Um, I, I agree. I just don't know exactly how you want to do that. Well, I mean, he has a lot of booze on him. <laughs> that is true. And you have that, um, <clears throat> don't you have that magic item that the has the different nozzles. Yeah, has the different. Pour some oil. Oh, I'd forgotten about the cask of many fluids. Yes. I have a bunch of empty potion bottles stored in my ass. We could fill those <laughs> and then throw them down there. 
Okay. Um, yeah, we could make some makeshift Molotov cocktails with uh, the oil in the flask and uh, the empty bottles and Renaz mirrors behind. And <laughs> I'm like a yeah. cola machine, baby. I guess we'll I guess we'll firebomb ourselves some bugbears. Oh, that's going to be horrible smelling though. All that yes. burning hair, jeez. Coca Cola. <laughs> Poopsie. <laughs> Poopsie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might be the best. Oh, Mountain Dew Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pooper. Oh, they're Dr. perfect. Pooper. All they're these perfect. soft drinks are perfect. Dr. Pooper. At least they're soft drinks. If, if we had, you know, bad fiber, it might be uh, hard drinks. <laughs> Metapusal. Um, Meta been a poosel uh okay let's see let's uh i'm i'm okay with that as a plan let's we do it. are absolute children by the way for these jokes <laughs> yes yes we 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 admit it we embrace it and we will not change um yeah. on the other hand we, we could have sierra pissed <laughs> <laughs> all right you know. so are you are you guys uh bombing the bugbears the two bugbears in the at the bottom of the rift or the bugbear and the drow across the the way in the rift in the rift okay whoever goes across the chasm on the floating disc should just have handfuls of them <laughs> or drop them even on top of them uh, right? doesn't yeah. that make more sense so that way we'd still have a person on the other side ready to react yeah um, that's that sounds like a great idea Varys. <laughs> yes sir yes sir let's get this she done he can he can handle multiple bottles yes yes if anyone yes, in our yes. group oh, yeah. the so the 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 flying disc can hold a weight of 500 pounds is that right Check. so you could probably put maybe all three of you on it well oh, probably two. That, we'll say two yeah I feel I a trap way. coming with her wanting to put all three of us <laughs> no, in one spot. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Look, let's be honest. I weigh nine pounds soaking wet. <laughs> I am, I am nothing but skin and and residual cocaine. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm a, I'm pretty narrow myself. I'm like a windsock. <laughs> I got a beer gut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Varus is definitely the big one of, of the three of us. I think it also depends on our gear too. Probably yeah. two at a time. So if yeah. we put you two over there, I can control the disc without having to control it myself. Yeah, okay, I can stay over here and I can stay, jump. It has <sighs> to be within 20 feet of you to you, for you to move it. Right How far is the chasm? Um, it is, these squares are 10 feet, so. Oh, oh shit. It's like 25 <laughs> feet across. Okay, well, I can move it halfway, then use my boots to jump to the other side with my move action and then pull it across. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we've ruined it with a plan. <laughs> All right. Oh, we are so going to lie some motherfuckers right. on so fire. So how many, how, many, how many empty flasks do we have? Well, at least one from Mel. <laughs> one from me. Yep. Those two really stand out. Uh, we'll got Mel have, twice. That's true. We'll see you have three. <laughs> okay. So I am going to use our flask of mini liquids. Okay. And fill off those. Off the edge. Hmm? You could just hang the big thing off the edge and pour it. Fuck using the bottles. You could... Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I really kind of need to get it on the bugbears. So I think like... That's fair. I think mm. turning them more into like Molotov style cocktails and throwing them at the ground and having them break and explode over the bears is going to be easier than me trying to basically do a wet t-shirt contest with them. <laughs> then, Nate, you throw them. Who has the better decks? Uh, it's probably not me. My decks is... Uh... I have a 19 decks. Oh, okay. God, yes. That guy's throwing them. <laughs> Well, then you throw them, and then you should take the thing and pour the rest of it. As, as we over. float over? Yeah, uh, so that sure. way we don't okay. waste any. Okay, that's yeah. fine. I, I'm good with that. Give him the golden shower. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, does the, does the pit itself... Does the pit right. itself angle in a direction? Um, Towards them, maybe? Yeah. Excellent. So, all oil leads to Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the way that, okay. that the way that that water is flowing, it's going to the north, so it's mm -hmm. I'd imagine, yeah. Okay. Uh yep. I think we're ready. I think we have a plan. Okay. Um Do so... you guys want to shout something cool? 
as you do it. All right. Well, I was gonna ask if for stealth checks, but never mind on that part. Oh, they're gonna Fire. see us when we get on the other side. The roof. The roof. <laughs> gonna yell fire in the hole. Right. Uh, fire oh, from the fire. Hole. Fire in the hole means something else. Yeah. In this group. Uh, that is Varys, true. give me a stealth check. Since you're the All one right. uh, doing this attack. Oh god. This will go great. Right. Uh Bardic Inspiration. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I wanted to do it before you announced your roll. All right, that is a 15 with the dice plus a four on the dexterity. 19. Nice. Um, all right, so you uh, will say you have advantage on your uh, attacks to throw these. Uh, oh, God, don't fuck yeah, it up yes. and both of you catch on fire and fall down into the floor. <laughs> All right, so I got three attacks, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, three. Three, three bottles. You should, Nate. You should give him a uh, bar inspiration on one of these as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and I. Well, that one's gone now because this uh, fuck up will be immense if we <laughs> this one. Up. Well, she just gave me advantage in all three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So first one. Still, give it to twelve. Him anyway if you can. And a five, so uh, twelve plus four plus two, um, eighteen on the first one. That'll hit. On the second one, 10 and a nat 20. Nice. And on the third one. So in your third attack, are nat you... Nat 20. Okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm, are you dividing the nat 20s between the two? Yes. The, okay. Yeah, the third one, the first roll is a nat 20. On the second one, the second roll was a nat 20. <clears throat> and the first one was an 18 total. Okay. All right. Um... And that was without elven accuracy. I guess these are essentially like alchemist fire, which I think is like a 2d6. They're oil and they will explode because they're yeah. not alcohol. These are actually oil. Right. Okay. Um, we'll, say, we'll say 2d6 because that's the closest thing I can... Welcome, Welcome to, to my world with you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but on the nat 20s, you can... You, Obviously, double the dice. Oh, so, shit. Uh, give me the damage for the first one that was not a nat 20. Okay. But still hit. Uh, five. Okay. That one's still alive. Now, is, this, is there ongoing damage after this? Yeah, burning damage. You start yeah. with D6, right? 1D6, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> 16 on the second one. Okay. Is that for the one that you just hit? And the third one... 16 again. Okay. Oh, damn. I keep four D6s to start rolling dice off to the side, and anytime I have to roll D6s, I use those four special ones. All right. So one is very low. The other is not quite as low. Uh, and we will roll initiative at this point. Mm. 19. 19. 22. 22. Ugh. Virian? 10. I got a rock. It's better than my five last time when I rolled a nat one. That is true. Okay. Uh, Renazmir, you were up first. So the um, the drow and the uh, bugbear that are across the way have, have definitely noticed something is up. Um, what would you like to do? I'm going to move the thing out into the center. Right? That's where it was, right? Yes. When they did the move, mm -hmm. Nate, did you pour the oil off the side in the surprise round? Um, I thought that was the plan. But... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, yeah. when they try to escape, if they try to get out of the fire, they'll walk in some more oil and set that on fire. <laughs> We've just turned this chasm into a giant deep fryer. Okay. So since the thing is in the middle, I have mm -hmm. to jump kind of parallel to it, so I don't leave the range and make them fall. Okay. But not directly through them. I'm going to use my boots to jump my three times jump, get a running start, uh, only a couple feet, and then leap to the other side, and then immediately start moving the... Moving it where? To the side that I'm jumping to. Okay. Sorry, you cut out. All right, so you... So the disc was halfway across the rift. You jumped and landed on it? 
no, or no, you jumped across across the way. Across the way. Yeah. Okay, so you're kind of, we'll say you're about ten feet out from the the bugbear and the drow. Okay, and then as... I'm going to immediately pull the disc back across as fast as I would be able to walk. Okay, so that's your movement. We'll say the it was part of your movement to jump across, and then you use the rest of your movement to bring um, it over to your side. So you right. still have an action and a bonus action. Uh, I kind of want to do a comedy thing here, but I'm a little worried because the last comment didn't go so hot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to prepare then to use uh, a cantrip. Okay. Um, as soon as I get to the other side, I'm going to use my uh, my bandana that I use to cover my eyes with when it's dark or when it's bright. Mm-hmm my uh, sunglasses band and uh, I'm gonna lift that up to my eyes right mm-hmm. and I'm like are you my dad <laughs> uh, the Jow looks back at you and he looks partially confused and then he kind of looks at like the rest of you and uh, it seems like he is there's there's some recognition that uh, comes to his face it looks like maybe he he is my dad he is heard of your group he's a fan he's a fan my dad is a fan and now we just (laughs) uh, i'm gonna feel so bad you know what i'm gonna feel really bad now if like this was we completely misread this situation and we've got like this is like an archaeology class from bugbear (laughs) university they were were, uh bugbears right yeah generally evil Yes. Well, I'm just, but I, I know, but I'm just thinking like, you know, it's Bugbear University. They're on a fucking field trip. The Drow's their teacher. BBU. They're just, they're, yeah, they're just like trying to learn about, you know, culture and, 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 and dig up artifacts and stuff. And then we come in and set them all on fire. Well, actually, <laughs> now that, now that you're thinking on that, Varian, um, the two Bugbears down in the rift that you guys set on fire, <laughs> yeah. um, it did seem like they were kind of poking through the rocks, like they were looking for something or doing some sort of excavation. I hope Oops. they weren't looking for a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I can raise them. No worries. Uh, hopefully right. they're looking for a fire extinguisher now. Uh, anything else for Nazir? Uh Yeah. If if he looks at me, does he seem to react to us negatively or positively? Uh, negatively. Okay. Well, then I'm going to use dancing lights right in his face. Okay. Because he's a drow, that should blind him temporarily. Like Should, right in the space in front of him and his pal. Mm-hmm. That actually might fuck with the bugbear too. No, they have dark vision, but the bugbears don't have like a, a light weakness. But we do, which is why I put my eyeball glasses on. There are four lights. <laughs> so, uh, Renazir, you you do this. You you notice though that there's not really the type of reaction that you would expect from a drow. Like he doesn't really seem bothered by it. What? All right. Well, then I'm just gonna let him dissipate. Then uh, mm-hmm. cancel him out. It's a cantrip, right. so I can turn him off. Uh, anything else? Nope. That's it. All right, Varys. You guys are on land now, by the way. Yes. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on his ass. Which one? The draw. Okay. And then I'm going to pull that bow back and let her fly. All right. Roll your attack. Fourteen. Fourteen will hit. Oh, jeez. I think we actually did hit a teacher. It's four plus two is six plus four is ten. Okay. Welcome aboard the tragic school bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, oh. Ferris? Pop my beer. Take a drink. Okay. Flip them off while I'm doing it. Uh, Varys way of saying EOT. And uh, Magic used to say EOT is end of turn. Varys, roll me a, uh, a D6 fire damage for one of the bugbears. Five. Okay. He is barely alive. He's going to spend his turn uh, putting out his fire. Hey, just just roll around a bit. You'll be okay. <laughs> uh, Drow's turn. Uh, boo. Let's see here. Uh, he's going to look at the three of you. Uh, 
bunch of butthole scrunchies, five dollars. <laughs> does does he monologue? Does he monologue? I am half bug, half bear, and you have offended both ends. Uh, he will say you're the you're the bards. I make my own honey. Uh, that is Lich Gate, motherfucker. Black Spider is oh, going to be very it? pleased when I bring you his corpse. You, when I bring him your corpses. You always make sure you get your syntax right before you say it. I have the same problem. <laughs> Uh, and then he will uh, move up to Renazmir and make two slam attacks. You want a slam? You uh, want a I'm going to use a hit? shield. No, I'm. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it doesn't hit. Okay. Second attack. Uh, does a 21 hit? Not with shield. My reaction. Oh. Okay. Wong. Uh, he looks very annoyed. Why did you try to fight? Was that the bugbear or the... Uh... That was the drow. You're not drow. I'm going to like take my finger and lick it. Wipe it on his face. <laughs> You're a regular cookie elf. <laughs> he looks like a drow. Oh. My goddamn neighbor is kneeling on the fucking wall right now. At 2.15 in the morning? It's 11.15 here. Oh, okay. That's perfect time for kneeling. I always try to nail between 11 and 2. And then again, around noon, if I can convince them. <laughs> uh, the drow, uh, Renazmir, he will say, why don't you stop working with these scrubs? We can talk to uh, Black Spider. You want to meet him, don't you? That's my father. Well, maybe you should... Uh... Prove that you're actually interested in working with them. Help me. How would I prove that? Uh, he'll gesture to your to your two bandmates and be like, "Help me take care of these guys." How do you, do you want to make them breakfast in bed? That, I'm. They would feel like you're really taking care of them. <laughs> uh, the bugbear that has not been set on fire. Uh, he's gonna move up to Varus. Actually, no, he's gonna stay where he's at and he's gonna chuck his javelin at Varus. Uh, let's see here. Varus, does a 16 hit you? It does, but that motherfucker just started the war of assholes. <laughs> I'm coming for it. I you don't better know be many- hairy or not, I'm coming for that asshole now. And I'm going to make myself some bug bearish crunchies. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hold you on, take wait, wait. seven piercing damage. Wait, 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 wait. Before, um, before that happens, does it look like a javelin hitting him? How far in... How far away from the chasm is he? Is is Varus? Varus? Uh, Varus is probably like five feet away from the. Not enough to be knocked in, right? No. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, you might have to eat this one, pal. Pal, pal of mine. <laughs> That's seven piercing damage, Varus. All right, no worries. Virian, your turn. Uh- okay. Um. So we've got bugbears. Well, I believe Do I really want to do that? <clears throat> no. Nah, um, you know what? I'm going to send a fire bolt into the uh, the bugbear that's up on top with us. Okay. Uh 15 15 will not hit. Do you have a bardic inspiration? Uh, no, because the one Varus gave me would have expired already. I wasn't thinking about it. I still have a bunch left, so I'm trying to save my charges for things that are going to, you know, like getting knocked off of a floating disc right. into your death. Right. Well, I mean, but we should be, I mean, I can take a move action to get off the disc onto solid ground, right? Yeah. I, I will certainly be doing that. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to use my sorcery points to regain a second level spell slot. Okay. So that is a thing I will do, and that's going to be all I can do. All right. 
Uh, Varus, roll me a d6 for the fire damage for the other bugbear. Four. Okay. Oot. So he is still alive, and he spends his turn rolling around and putting out the fire. <laughs> ah! Ah! Renazmir, it is yes. your turn. Okay. Guy that's right in front of me, right? Uh-huh. He came over and he punched at you. Right. Without exiting, I'm. we're still talking about um, me joining him, right? Yes. I want to kind of like take a ponderous look on my face and kind of walk around so that I'm on the other side of him from the wall, from okay. the chasm. Uh-huh. And then I want a, a thunder wave. Oh. All right. Uh, let's see here. He makes a dexterity save? Uh, he makes a... God damn it. I, I swear to God, I flipped this spell. I think it should be a con, right? Constitution. Constitution? Yeah. Uh, 14. That is a match to mine. So he makes it. Okay. God damn it. Does he take damage? Yeah. He takes half of seven. Boy, this was a failure. <laughs> this was really a not good way for that to go. <laughs> I was hoping that would be way cooler. I'm sorry. Uh, anything else for Nazmir? Uh, let me think. No, I think that's it. Do you want to give a bardic inspiration to anyone? I do. I want to give one to... Who's next in, in turn order? Varus. Varus is dealing with Bugbear, right? Uh, yes. Okay, it, th it, it threw a javelin at him. All right, I'm going to give it to Varus. Okay. Ferris, it is your turn. I pull out one of my own. Yeah, I got javelins from that quiver I stole from the hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. Pull out my own javelin with butthole scrunchies on it already from the goblins. And I'll use a bonus action to move my hunter's mark over to dumbass. Okay. I want to take a shot of the Mr. Buggy. All right. Roll your attack. That is a 17. That will hit. Oh, thank God. And that is a 13. He does not look good. Right. Anything else, Ferris? I pull out another butthole scrunch and I swirl it around on my finger in the air. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to you and your family. In his family? In his family? Whoa. <laughs> what did they do? And your drought buddy. That's some Mike Tyson <laughs> shit. Actually, actually, it's just the only way Varys can make a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a right. Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you'd like to see our adventures in comic form, the professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you're interested in supporting us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Renazmir on lead guitar. David Walker as Varys on drums, and Nathan Lett as Varian Herpator, Lich Gate's executive talent agent. And let's not forget, last but not least, our suffering DM, Rachel Moore. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, the invoice is in the mail. Oh, like the Beatles song. Yeah. 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 Be a field tripper. <laughs> One way ticket. Yeah. <laughs> no? Hmm. Look me so lonely. <laughs> I found out. But I found out. 
Bam. Bam. You can end this anytime. Bam. Okay.